This conference will now be recorded. So very good evening students. Today we are starting a new chapter, Magnetic Effect of Current. And basically today we will be learning about bias of law in this magnet, uh, magnetic effect of current in this chapter bias of law and its application is very very important and there will be at least one numerical problem from this particular topic in any competitive exam so today let us learn before we learn bias of law let us learn what is called magnetic effect of current magnetic effect of current so what is magnetic effect and how magnetic effect is arising okay or what is that particular uh, term which is actually responsible for magnetic effect see this is very simple a very simple example if we take you might have seen already uh, or you might have played with a bar magnet when you bring any piece of pin near to it Okay, so if you bring some alpins of so so those will be actually attracted by this magnet, okay, bar magnet, bar magnet. Okay, if you bring two bar magnet, they will actually attract or repel each other so that we have seen so to explain interaction between two charges basically this magnetic effect of current so this is called magnetic effect and this effect is actually produced by see as you have seen in case of electrostatics what if you have a charge if you have a charge here and at some r distance away from this charge if you bring another charge okay it will be experiencing some certain force and that force like without any interaction so this is kind of a force both this and electrostatic force and magnetic force they are actually non contact force non contact force even if you are not keeping them in contact both the charges will experience force similarly any object magnetic object will experience a force experience a force if you bring it to a uh, near to a magnet okay any magnetic material in the sense like iron, cobalt, nickel, those are magnetic material. So, so this force, as we have dis discussed or explained in case of static charges, that there is a field created by the source charge. And once you bring another charge inside that field, the other charge will experience a force or both the charges will experience a force. Okay. I mean to say, if I bring this smaller small Q charge inside the field of capital Q, it will experience a force. In other words, we can say if we bring this capital Q charge in the field of small Q, then they experience a force. So to here, in case of moving charges, in case of, so in case of static charges, we have understood that is Coulomb force and electric field, etc but in case of 
moving charges how they interact how do moving charges interact charges interact okay so this to answer to this question to answer to this question or explain how moving charges interact with each other the concept of magnetic field was introduced that means what so how how it it can explain magnetic field how the concept of magnetic field came and how magnetic field concept of magnetic field can explain the interaction between two moving charges suppose i have a moving charge q and it is moving so while moving if it can produce a magnetic field okay another moving charge okay another moving charge so suppose this is charge which is moving if this moving charge or any current moving charge means current if a current produce a magnetic field around it magnetic field around it when another moving charge comes or passes through this field it will experience a force so this is the explanation so it has actually two steps moving charge or current Sorry. moving charge or current or current current conductor we can say or just current current produces let us say current current conductor let it be in the bracket so uh, first what happens a moving charge or current produces magnetic field around it around it. okay and second thing is that <clears throat> Second step is that the magnetic field exerts a that magnetic field actually magnetic field exerts a force exerts a force on a moving charge on another moving charge. not another on a moving charge is fine moving charge so first magnetic field is created and then magnetic field exerts a force on a moving charge or current oh, sorry moving charge or current okay so this is the concept of magnetic field why the concept of magnetic field was introduced to explain the interaction between two moving charges so it is it is a two step process moving charge a moving charge or current produces a magnetic field around like in the space around it and then magnetic field that magnetic field exerts the force on some other magnetic charges moving charges or current current conductor so this is actually about magnetic field now magnetic field is generally denoted by this and this has so this is magnetic this is also called magnetic induction magnetic field magnetic flux density magnetic flux density 
and also it has got another name that is magnetic induction induction okay so these are names and magnetic field intensity magnetic field intensity is generally denoted by h okay obviously this uh, this has subtle differences between b and h we'll discuss that later okay and see just like electric field magnetic field is also a vector quantity it is also a vector quantity but obviously this vector is uh, we'll discuss so this is a, this is also a vector quantity okay this is a vector quantity like electric field okay all right we'll go ahead so today we'll discuss see we have seen that moving charges or current produces magnetic field so bias of law will help you to understand see in case of in case of electrostatics or static charges how static charge can create a magnetic field sorry electric field and the magnitude and direction of the electric field for a static charge was given by coulomb's law coulomb's law you you i hope you know this coulomb's law in case of static charges okay static charges how static charge like not how how much magnitude magnitude and direction of the electric field created by static charges was given by coulomb's law okay here the magnitude and the direction magnitude and the direction of magnetic field produced by a current a current carrying conductor or simply current okay will be given by bias of law so what i am trying to say the magnetic field created by a current current conductor will be both by direction both the direction and magnitude can be obtained from the bias of law okay let us see how see this experimental detailed experimental proof was given by old state that like experimental effect were seen experimentally old had observed that current carrying conductor produces a magnetic field around it after after the result of old experiment the french physicist biot jean baptiste biot and Felix Savard. They deduced an empirical formula. Empirical in the sense, these are based on. These are actually laws given on the basis of experimental result. Okay, empirical law means laws deduced. from the experimental results experimental results original laws or theories are different first from some natural phenomena a theory can be deduced like postulates will be given not postulate uh, hypothesis will be given and that hypothesis if it is proved by experimental uh, experiment then that hypothesis will be established as theory but empirical laws are different slightly they, they are actually deduced from the experimental result okay 
so this biot and sabat they have actually analyzed the experimental data or the magnetic effect of current several times through their experiments and from the experimental results they had given an empirical formula or empirical law that is called by sabat law and using that law what we can do we can determine the magnitude and the direction of the magnetic field that a current element may produce at any point in space around it so to understand biasabat law we need to learn one important term that is current element current element what is current element suppose i have a current current conductor of arbitrary shape so it is carrying current i suppose so if i want to calculate magnetic field at any point over here at p due to this current or current current conductor itself so if i if i have to calculate magnetic field okay so magnetic field is actually just like electric field so magnetic field also will obey the superposition principle so instead of taking the whole current current conductor at a time if we can divide this into small small elements okay small small elements like this and then we can find out the magnetic field produced by each element at this particular point and then we can take the vector sum of the magnetic field produced by each element so this element suppose i consider such an element like this and that element has length dl small length dl see this is actually element elemental length but what is current element current element we say i dl dl is a vector so current element itself is a vector quantity this is a vector quantity this is vector quantity okay this current element i dl this is actually current element and what is the direction of this current element it is the direction it has the direction in the direction of current okay current element is a vector quantity it has direction along the direction of the current so current element is a vector quantity and second point is the direction of current element is along the direction of the current in the direction of the current okay so this is current element we have learned what is current element now we will see what is this empirical law like what is the statement of this by sabat law okay we will clean this portion okay so we'll clean this portion i have kept the figure here okay so let us discuss what is by sabat law see this by sabat law is saying that see suppose 
there is a current current conductor this is infinitely long that's why dash line so infinitely long current current conductor and it has arbitrary shape okay so we just consider an element of this current current conductor that is dl of, of length dl okay of length dl and if we calculate magnetic field due to or magnetic field produced by this particular current element idl this particular current element at this point p so this magnetic field due to this element current element is directly proportional to so if the magnetic field is db this magnetic field is db at p that is directly proportional to the current and it is directly proportional to the length of the element okay length of the element okay i'll write in terms of scalar itself first the magnetic field is directly proportional to the angle sine of the angle between this current element and the position vector of this point p from the element so this r is the position vector of this point p this is the point of observation where we are calculating the magnetic field from this current element dl okay and the angle between this d dl ideal current element so which has direction in this way okay which has direction in this way generally this current element has direction tangent at that part, at particular if i take this point so it will be actually going like this okay this is the angle. this is the ideal this is current element direction of current element and this is the direction of vector position vector so angle between them is theta the magnetic field produced by this current element is directly proportional to the sign of the angle between the current element and the position vector of the point of observation okay one more part is that this magnetic field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the point of observation and the current element okay i'll repeat this suppose i have an arbitrary shaped current current conductor which like through which current i is flowing okay and if i conduct uh, if i consider a small current element ideal as you see here this is a current element and i have to calculate magnetic field at point p due to this current element then according to bayesian Biotin Travert. This magnetic field, magnitude of the magnetic field dB, magnitude of the magnetic field dB is directly proportional to the current, directly proportional to the length of the element, directly proportional to the sine of the angle between the current element and the position vector, and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. between the current element and the point of observation if i combine all this c i'll get db is equal to i c this is a proportional right so i have to keep one proportional to constant as well so proportional to constant k and this is i dl sin theta because they are directly proportional and this is r square so this is the statement of the bayesian law now what is what is this k this k depends on the medium between this point of observation p and the element so if this is if this is free space if this is happening in the free space then this k has got a value mean 0 by 4 pi Which is 10 to the power minus 7 Tesla meter 
per ampere in SI unit. Okay, or OE bar, OE bar per meter per ampere. Okay, this is the unit SI unit. Okay, in SI unit in free space, the K, this proportionality constant K has a value mu zero by four pi. And mu zero by four pi is ten to the power minus seven tesla meter per ampere. Okay, tesla meter per ampere, or OE bar per meter per ampere. What is this mu zero? This mu zero has got a name. This mu zero is called permeability. permeability of free space permeability permeability of free space okay this is called permeability of free space now in si unit by savart law can be expressed then magnitude obviously we are writing the magnitude so this is mu zero by four pi. This is in SI unit. SI unit. In SI unit. This can be written as ideal sine theta by r square okay this is the formula obviously we can write the vector form of it also let us first write the vector form then i'll discuss this right hand thumb rule i don't have space over here so what i'll do i'll just okay let me go to the next page itself so look this db is now in si and mu zero by four pi i dl sin theta by r square okay now <laughs> i can write in terms of vector see i can do one thing here i can just multiply one r over here and then i can write one r here also look how does it look like ideal and r i'll keep here r sine theta divided by r cube see this ideal r sine theta this can be written see if i want to write in terms of vector then i can write like this mu zero by four pi ideal r sine theta i i can write ideal cross r so ideal sine theta is over Okay, in fact, I should give this ideal uh, together ideal cross R by R cube. This is the vector form of vector, vector form of Biosabat law. Okay, mu zero I dl R cross by R cube. Better to keep this mu zero I by four pi. This let us keep this together along with this del cross r by r cube so sometime it can be written in terms of unit vector also so mu zero if you write in terms of unit vector mu zero i by four pi dl cross r cube sorry r vector r dl cross r unit vector then say you have to write here r square okay <coughs> so this is how you can write see ultimately we have got the magnitude that is mu zero ideal sine theta by r square okay i'll just Keep the main formula. This is the magnitude as you see here. 
this is the magnitude of the magnetic field produced by by a current element okay this gives the magnitude and this gives the direction see this gives both direction and magnitude in fact both the thing see both this form they will give you the direction also i'm sorry so these two will give you the direction of the magnetic field produced at particular point also will be given by this formula mu 0 i by 4 pi dl cross r by r q okay so as you see here this is actually a cross product okay cross product so how to find out direction out of cross product see right hand thumb rule you can use you can use right hand screw rule etc so in this case we will use right hand thumb rule see here how to apply the right hand thumb rule you can see there are two vectors suppose v and b so suppose v cross b so this is some quantity f so how to find out the direction of b cross b In fact, there will be a quantity Q V cross B that we will see that is magnetic force. Here we are just just like that we are finding out the direction, so we don't worry about this Q here. Okay, that is nothing to add with the direction. So, see to apply your right hand thumb rule, you have to actually stretch stretch your four fingers. See just leave your thumb finger just like shown here see earlier the fingers were like this along the direction of this okay along the direction along the direction of the first vector v and then we have to curl the see curl the fingers towards the vector b then at the same time you have to stretch your see when you stretch your like the four fingers along with your palm towards the first vector you have to keep your thumb perpendicular to that particular plane okay perpendicular see this is the vb plane so you keep these fingers in the uh, along the direction you stretch your fingers of right hand along the direction of v and then curl towards the second vector b at that time your thumb finger will go or or that will be stretched in the direction of the cross product like here b cross b is equal to f that is what according to the figure okay so you have to actually apply right hand thumb rule so in this case look here in this figure see in this figure at this particular point at this particular point p in which direction the magnetic field will be see i have to multiply i dl cross dl cross r so r is the direction in this way okay and the dl is this way so in which direction the magnetic field will go at this particular point at this particular point see at this particular point your dl is this direction and r is this direction so you have to stretch your four fingers along this direction see along the direction of current element ideal okay ideal and this is the direction of r vector you have to just curl them towards the r so you will easily get that your thumb is going into the plane of the paper or plane, uh, plane of the page okay that means your uh, thumb finger will go into the plane so the magnetic field direction will be into the plane of the paper here see this sign means magnetic field going into the into the page 
and when this sign is given you have to understand magnetic field is coming out of the plane okay into the plane and out of the plane out of the plane so right hand thumb rule will help you to find out the direction of the magnetic field okay produced by any current element now let us go to the <clears throat> okay let us see some interesting features over here see some special cases in or special features of this magnetic like a uh, biosavart law see <clears throat> take this magnitude form itself see the see when theta is 0 degree sin theta is also 0 right so the db will be 0 as well that means the magnetic field along the axis of the element is 0 Man, this implies magnetic field along the axis of the along the axis of the current element is zero okay but where it will be maximum when theta is 90 degree that means you know when you have a current current conductor like this and your point of observation is lying at any point in this plane which is actually perpendicular to the uh, current element and it is passing it is going to going through the current element okay so at any point at any point in the plane perpendicular to in the so magnetic field will be maximum magnetic field will be maximum due to current element where in a plane passing through the current element and perpendicular to its axis any plane passing through the current element and perpendicular to its axis in such plane magnetic field will be maximum other than the point on the axis okay so when theta is 90 degree maximum db is maximum okay db is maximum So these are few points. Now we'll go to the next discussion. We'll discuss now Bayesian law versus Coulomb's law. See, I had already mentioned that in case of static charges, electric field is produced by Coulomb's law, right? I'll write here and bio Sabat law. Okay, first let us write the dissimilarities or let us write the similarities. Similarities and then See, similarities, both are actually inverse square law. See, electric field is Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R square, right? Both are inverse square law. Both follow inverse square. See here, ideal cross. So, ideal sine theta here means 0 by 4 pi by R square. So both are inverse square. They both follow inverse square. So these are not differences. These are actually similarities. Similarities.
okay then second thing is that both fields are long range fields long range both are actually long range this is also long range okay and third thing is that both follow or obey law of superposition okay this also obeys law of superposition or super uh, sorry not law principle of superposition this is called principle sorry obeys principle of superposition principle So always superposition principle. So these are actually similarities. Now we will find out few dissimilarities. Okay. So dissimilarities, dissimilarities. What are those? We'll find out one by one. Let me write both the form, both vector form or let us write the forms of the Coulomb's force and Coulomb's law and Biasabat law. See Coulomb's law, let me first write. This is first point, let us write here. Uh, electric field is C Q1, Q, Q1, here only Q, Q by 4 pi epsilon naught. R cube, R vector, okay? And here it is C, what it is, vector form I'm writing, mu zero by four pi, I DL cross, R by R Q. So this cross product actually involves angle. So does not depend on angle. So these are the expression of Ys. So this does not, second point does not, depend on angle does not depend on angle but in this case it depends on angle sin theta is there no so depends on angle so depends on angle okay third point is that the electric field is produced by static charges Is produced by static charge so this fact is dealt with Coulomb law but in this case magnetic field produced by moving charges Okay, then fourth point is that, see, the source of source of E electric field vector quantity is a scalar. Charge is a scalar, right? From charge only electric field is produced. So a scalar. Then here, source of B is a vector quantity vector quantity is the source what is that current element ideal and here scalar quantity 
charges okay so ideal is a vector quantity so vector source in case of magnetic field the source is a vector one whereas in case of coulomb flow it is a scalar source okay so that is what we need to to know about the similarities between the forces sorry uh, coulomb flow and the bisavart flow now we will see the application of bisavart law so there are many applications obviously so bisavart law can be used to determine the magnetic field produced by current current carrying conductor of any arbitrary shape of any arbitrary shape we will discuss this one by one while applying by some law that may be that made of many small current elements so any arbitrary shape like i have a shape like this maybe so i can just divide this in various small small current element right if i have suppose a circle circular conductor i can make it smaller smaller okay and for each element we can calculate db and then sum them up according to love superposition principle of superposition i can have a rectangular current current conductor so for this also we can i can have a square i can have a triangular i can have infinite wire i have straight finite wire so this kind of various shape of this conductor current can conductor will produce magnetic field and that can be calculated by using the bisavart law okay so we will see for the time being application of this bisavart law will calculate magnetic field magnetic field produced by or magnetic field du2 magnetic field du2 is straight current current conductor straight and long we can say we can say long i am not saying whether finite and infinite in fact this we are going to do is in a uh, finite one but in general we can just extend that to that into that for uh, infinite conductor also long current carrying conductor okay so this is the topic today we are going to discuss about the application of the bisavart law see okay i have this already so this is the heading just a minute let me just push it a little bit up okay so suppose there is a current carrying conductor okay for the time being let us take this as a finite current carrying conductor even though the dots are there we will take or we will consider this as a finite current carrying conductor then we will extend that to infinite one so I can give this name finite one. So let us say this is X and Y. This is a current carrying conductor which is carrying a current I. Current I is flowing through this. Okay. And see, I have to find out 
मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ड्यू टू दिस करंट कैन कॉन्डक्टर होल कॉन्डक्टर नॉट फॉर सिंपल एलिमेंट I have to calculate this. This I am just supposing this is a finite to one. So I have to calculate the magnetic field due to this current current conductor at this particular point P. At this particular point P. So what was the what was Bayer-Stokes law? We will be applying Bayer-Stokes law, and then we can then sum them up. Summation can be the summation can be done through integration also. Okay, just take term by term, uh, like, and uh, like you can just do two things. You can just take summation. That means you take one quantity, then another quantity. Okay, then another quantity. Then you just do this addition or summation. But integration is actually applicable for continuous body, so we'll we'll sum it through integration. so see let us suppose this p point q p this this distance is a so at at a, a distance away there is a point p where we have to calculate magnetic field due to this whole current current conductor which is carrying current i so to do that let us apply, apply bayer-stokes law and to apply the bayer-stokes law let us consider a current element DLC, IDL, or DL, you can say. So this is current element, which is L distance away. See, it is L distance away from the point here. So this point. Okay. What is this PQ? So PQ or QP? Whatever you say, this PQ or QP. This is actually. See, this is the perpendicular distance. From the conductor to this point P, perpendicular distance. Now, since I have cal, I have considered this current element. I have to take the position vector of this point P from this current element, and that is O P. So position vector O P. This is P Q is equal to A. Similarly, this O P is So this is a vector one. I am writing vector, or you can just make this. So this is a position vector r. Magnitude of the position vector r. So this O P is position vector. Okay. Now, as you see in the figure. Okay. So this uh, O Q. O Q has got length or Q what do you say? This is L. Now you see this is perpendicular perpendicular to this current current conductor. So this is also 90 degree. This side also 90. This is also 90. And let us say the current bit uh, sorry angle between the position vector and the current element is theta. And see the angle. So this this angle, okay, this angle is phi. This is phi. Okay, this is phi. And see, you can see this angle phi one and phi two, which are actually measured in this way. Like this, it is measured from this reference. You can say PQ as a reference line, and from there, the angles that uh, angles are actually calculated. This is phi one. This is phi two. And what are these angles? These angles are actually the angles subtended, subtended by the end at the point of observation. Subtended. This, this phi one and phi two are the angles subtended at the point of observation by the end points of the conductor. This is for a finite way. So angles are measured from this reference line towards the. in like uh, top of this and this is in the downward so that's why sometimes if i say this is theta phi is equal to zero line is this then phi 2 is taken as positive phi 2 has been taken as positive and phi 1 has been taken as negative angle we'll see that okay so this geometry i have told you now see from this figure see i have this 
by Sabat law db is equal to ideal sin theta magnitude itself i am writing uh, here was mu zero by four pi that is a very very known uh, constant term this is the thing now see if i consider this triangle consider this triangle consider triangle oqp or qp opq you can say oqp i am writing this is the triangle oqp this is the triangle so from here i can say so this is 90 so theta plus phi also will be 90 degree 90 degree this implies that phi will be 90 degree minus theta isn't it 90 minus theta so from this geometry again what is cos phi what is cos phi or sorry i am sorry this is let let us write let us write what is theta because we know theta is equal to 90 minus pi so what is sine theta then sine of angle 90 degree minus pi or this will be cos pi so sine theta can be written at this phase sine theta is equal to cos phi okay so i'll just keep it here somewhere so sine theta is equal to cos phi okay that we have learned already now we'll see what is cos phi according to the geometry see cos phi or see okay cos cos of this is base by so this can be taken as so this is a this is a hypotenuse so this is a by <clears throat> a by okay i'm sorry this is i'm going to find out okay so cos phi cos phi is equal to a by r okay a by r r is the magnitude of the position vector so cos phi or r is equal to what r is equal to what or this implies r is equal to a over cos phi which can be written as a sec phi see from here i am writing r will go here cos phi will come down so that i am writing as sec phi okay cos phi and so sec phi r is equal to sec phi so these are important terms which i am getting here now let us go to the next page and i have obviously the figure same figure okay so see what is tan phi over here perpendicular by base what is perpendicular perpendicular i can take this as l base i can take as a l by a so this is a this is l now i have to find out what is dl dl is a sec square phi if i take just derivative a sec square sec square phi d phi okay this is dl okay we have almost got everything let us see right one by one what is dl then dl is this and what is uh sine theta then sine theta is sine theta will be cos phi okay r we have obtained already that is a sec phi so these are the things we have obtained so what is by law db is equal to 
डीबी इज इक्वल टू मी जीरो बाय फोर पाई आई डी एल साइन थीटा बाय आर स्क्वायर सो इन दिस मी जीरो बाय फोर पाई देन आई हैव टू पुट दिस वैल्यूज साइन थीटा सो आई डी एल आई लेट इट बी हियर डीएल इज हाउ मच डीएल इज ए सिक्स स्क्वायर फाइ डी फाइ ओके and sin theta is again cos phi okay so r square is a square sec square phi so this two will get cancel so 1 a will be here so what we get mu 0 by 4 pi a and this is cos square phi sorry cos phi is there this is d phi actually cos phi and d phi Cos phi d phi, mu zero i by so i will be here mu zero i by four pi. A. Now, if you want to calculate the whole magnetic field due to like magnetic field due to the whole conductor, then we have to multiply sorry integrate integrate this value. See for the angle. See I have calculated for only phi, but these are ends of the angle. so i it has to be take a limit pi 1 minus pi 1 to pi 2 okay minus pi 1 to pi 2 have take the limit all right now we have got minus pi 1 pi 2 and see by savart law we know mu zero i by 4 pi a this is what we have got along with cos phi d phi Okay, so if you integrate this, what you get? Mu zero i by four pi a. Then sine pi. Okay, with a minus sign, pi one, and this is pi. Sorry, this is pi two. I do. Now, if we, I'll just make use of this portion. See, if we put this mu zero by four pi a, this is sine pi to minus. Sine of minus pi one. That means mu zero i by four pi a. Sine see this pi two. Sine pi one pi one plus sine pi two. So this will be actually minus here. Sine of minus pi one. so that is what will make you make this positive sin phi 1 and sin phi 2 so what we have got by savart law see by savart law for a straight so far we have just considered finite only so finite current carrying conductor b is equal to mu 0 i by 4 pi a 4 pi a then Sine phi one plus sine phi two. So this this is the result. See in this case, I'd like to make you uh, remind this angle is phi one with the minus sign, and this angle is phi two with the positive sign. Okay, so angle measurement you have to see from where angle is measured. Okay, so we have got this formula. Now there are some special cases. See, if this wire would have been infinite instead of finite, see we had this angle, right? Sine of this angle. 
okay this angle we had phi 1 and phi 2 but when it is infinite see this this particular line fall like this this particular line will fall here and this particular line will fall here okay if the wire is infinite so this is actually for a finite for a finite wire So for infinite C, both will be 90 degree. Phi 1 and phi 2 both will be 90 degree. This angle will be 90 degree. This angle also will be 90 degree. So both are 90 degree. <laughs> so in such cases, so in such case, what will be the formula? See here you write sine 90 degree 1. This is 1. So 1, 1, 2. So we get say B is equal to mu 0 i by 4 pi a c 1 plus 1 both are 90 degree because phi 1 and phi 2 here it is written theta 1 and theta 2 anyway both are same so both are 90 degree and hence this will be 2 and see the result is this magnetic field will be just double double okay double of the magnetic field you get due to finite wire okay now see if the wire is infinite but the point of observation is at any end of the at any end okay corresponding to this wire at any end if it is that then see this is actually falling on the reference line so this angle will be 90 degree since it is both side infinite so the angle between this line and this uh, angle so anyway the angle so phi 1 will be 90 degree if this is the point so phi 1 will be 90 degree and phi 2 will be 0 so in that case look this so this is 0 suppose sine phi 2 so sine phi 2 see phi 2 is 0 means this is 0 sine phi 2 is also 0 so you get me 0 i by 4 pi a sine phi 1 okay my uh, sine phi 1 is 90 degree so that will be one so you get mu zero i by four pi a okay <clears throat> or half of the <clears throat> half of the magnetic field created by an infinite wire so when it is at any other point okay not at the end so these are two special cases we have discussed so it will be half of the this now suppose the point of observation is just on the perpendicular bisector of the wire itself, finite wire itself. Then suppose this is NQ is Y by 2. See if this is at the, like this point of observation is just on the perpendicular bisector, then these angles will be actually both are phi or theta. So this will be 2 sine theta over here. So 2 to get up or maybe this is 2 two times two times what we get okay obviously the sine theta is also there so sine theta if you just apply, apply pythagoras rule and all you will get this formula mu zero i by four pi <coughs> a actually mu zero i by two pi a into sine theta and sine theta brought this two y divided by square root of four a square plus y square okay so I'll stop it here for today <coughs> with this discussion. So what we have learned, we have learned how to calculate magnetic field for a state uh, using Biosabat's law. So what is the formula for A? I'll just summarize. So Biosabat law, Sabat law, for finite wire so that is b is equal to mu zero i by 4 pi a sine phi 1 plus sine phi 2 so this is the master formula for infinite one infinite wire 
infinite OF. So this will be double of that because sine theta both are 90 degree. So that will be mu zero i by 2 pi a. Okay. So these are main thing. You can remember other points, others are like this one. If it is at the end, uh, if it is at the perpendicular bisector, okay. Observation at perpendicular bisector, okay, bisector. Then theta uh, phi one and phi two will be equal, so that will give you mu zero i by two pi a. Okay, so that will be mu zero i with the sine theta here, sine phi. Okay, all right. With this, we will stop it here. Uh, bye for today. Thank you for your patience.